Mr. Speaker, I thank the 13 members for raising many thoughtful questions on the socially conscious enterprise hawker centres, which I will shorten it for SEHCs. I will speak on why we embark on the social conscious, socially conscious enterprise hawker centre SEHC model, how we select operators, and share our views on how the SEHCs are performing. SMS Emicor will elaborate further on our efforts to refine the SEHC model and better support our hawkers. Hawker centres are an integral part of Singapore. They are our community dining rooms, well loved by Singaporeans from all walks of life. They serve three key social objectives by providing, one, affordable food in a hygienic environment, two, a decent living for our local hawkers, and three, a vibrant social space to bond our communities. These are good objectives to achieve individually, but together they compete against one another. So trade-offs need to be made for an optimal outcome. Let me start by recalling that the government restarted building hawker centres in 2011 after a hiatus of almost 30 years. <coughs> We were concerned about the lack of affordable dining out options for Singaporeans at a time when there was a boom in coffee shops and food courts. Natural market forces were pushing up rentals at those private F&B beverage outlets. And consequently, food prices. The public was concerned about the rising cost of living in response to widespread appeals by Singaporeans. We resumed building hawker centres to serve as a ballast to stabilize cooked food prices against the emerging dominance of coffee shops and food courts. The government has committed to building 20 new hawker centers by 2027 in new estates or existing ones that are relatively underserved. This will provide about 800 new hawker stalls at significant investments. Each hawker center costs $15 million to build. The government absorbs the building costs and subsidizes their ongoing maintenance but does not recover such costs from stall rental. We recognize, however, that just by building new hawker centers, we cannot automatically expect them to be viable and sustainable. In the early 1970s, the government started building <coughs> hawker centers to resettle street hawkers so as to improve hygiene and food safety standards. Over time, they became our signature community dining halls. To this day, they enable us to preserve the important culture of eating out together, regardless of the status, rich or poor, young and old. Over time too, a good number of these first and second generation hawkers who received cheap rental, subsidized rentals, only work short hours. Residents in turn feedback that some existing centres do not fully cater to their dining needs. I was at Shunfu Mart Food Centre during a recent Mitchell community visit in Bishan East Thompson constituency. The hawkers only open for breakfast and lunch, some even just for breakfast. Residents do not have access to affordable food in the evening. This situation reflects a need to be careful to the, for the careful balancing act to look after the interests of both hawkers and the community. Ultimately, hawker centres exist to serve Singaporeans, but we have also to be fair to hawkers and safeguard their well-being. Our social and demographic landscape has changed significantly. Today, the median age of hawkers is about 60 years old. We have about 6,000 cooked food stalls at our 114 hawker centres. More than one third of hawkers and their assistants will retire in the next 10 years. Being a hawker is physically demanding. Many successful hawkers tell us that they hope their children will not follow their footsteps. The challenges of the trade deter many young Singaporeans. We have to transform and find ways to make the hawker trade sustainable or we may end up 
with hawker centres without hawkers. The demographic profiles and needs of residents have also evolved, particularly in new estates. Patrons are more well-travelled and demand fresh concepts and wider food variety. Hawker centres have to compete with coffee shops, food courts and other food outlets in the community. Even the traditional model of dining meals has been disrupted by central kitchens and food delivery <coughs> services. We must help our hawkers meet these challenges, just like how we try to help our taxi drivers face the wave of challenges from disruptive competitions like Uber and Grab. To adapt to changing needs and circumstances, it is critical to find new operating <coughs> models to sustain the hawker trade. This is similar to the role which NTUC FairPrice has played in the supermarket landscape. Over the years, NTUC FairPrice has been innovating and moderating prices of essential groceries, which has catalyzed the transformation of the mom and pop grocery shops. Over time, as customer profiles change, NTUC FairPrice continues to meet the needs of a wide spectrum of customers by providing diverse product lines from affordable house brand options to premium brands. Even NTUC fair price would not have been sustainable if they only provided affordable alternatives without the attraction of choice for their customers. This is why we are trialling the SEHC model for our new hawker centres. We have started at seven new hawker centres out of more than 100 managed by NEA. These SHSC operators bring new ideas and inject innovation that hawkers individually or the government cannot. We are giving opportunity to those with expertise and network in the F&B industry to apply themselves to socially oriented purposes. For example, they're able to curate food stalls for quality and variety. They are also able to bring in famous food recipes and are better placed to run hawker incubation programs to help sustain the hawker trade. They also innovate to improve footfall and enhance vibrancy of the centres through better marketing and placemaking programs, and not just leave it to chance. As a single operator of each hawker centre, with FNB and management competencies, these SEHC operators can help our hawkers weather the competition from other F&B alternatives and adapt to technological disruptions better than the hawkers can individually. In time to come, the better SEHCs will develop capabilities to support and sustain the hawker trade that we will appreciate. To ensure that we select the right operators to, who do not profiteer NEA has put in place safeguards through the tender and evaluation processes. First, NEA favours operators with lower overall, overall charges to stallholders. Operators are required to propose rentals and operating costs upfront and cannot change this over the term of the tenancy. Second, operators must be transparent about costs. All new charges, including optional charges for value-added services, must be approved by NEA. Third, a large part of the hawker's <coughs> operating costs, like the S and CC charges and table cleaning fees, are pass-through charges, which the operators do not benefit from. As a reality check, we compare some of these costs with the alternatives like hiring additional hawker assistants, or the consequences of cheap sourcing low-quality workers. Fourth, operators are required to reinvest at least 50% of any operating surplus into social benefits for the hawker centres and stallholders. I'm heartened by the recent public discussion on how existing NA centres are better run than the SCHCs. It is testimony that existing hawker centres under NEA management have done well over the years to meet the needs of their communities and hawkers. But it is not enough to keep doing things the same way. This is why we have to continue with the SCHC model. Several members asked what makes a successful hawker centre. 
I believe most of us have patronised our favourite stalls at popular hawker centres such as at Tiong Bahru or Adam Road. Many such existing centres are well established in their communities. They have anchor hawkers who draw customers from all over the island. The new hawker centres do not enjoy this advantage and need time to build up a clientele. Location and connectivity are important factors. New hawker centres at Kampung Emeraldi and Our Tampines Hub, OTH, situated at transport nodes and co-located with other public services or amenities, have enjoyed good business. Higher business volume will help stallholders cope with the costs. On the whole, <coughs> SACs have achieved good outcomes despite the short time they have started operations. Foremost, food prices at HSC are affordable and comparable to existing centres. These are generally lower than prices at surrounding coffee shops and food courts. <coughs> we cannot force hawkers to sell at cheap prices for all dishes at each stop. Instead, the operators have made available at least one affordable meal option at $3 and below for each store, and allow hawkers to determine prices for their other dishes. This means that price is not kept artificially low. Instead, operators work with hawkers to offer a range of food offerings at different price points so that there are both attractive options that residents are willing to pay for and at the same time, affordable options when residents want that. Some hawkers have also chosen to price their dishes to attract more customers. For example, old times at the Kampung Emirati Hawker Centre prices all dishes below $3. Indeed, at each SEHC, there are close to 40 affordable options of various kinds of meals from 40 different stores. Secondly, SEHC operators have curated food stalls for quality and variety. They have tapped on their network of hawkers and have the expertise to conduct food tasting when letting out stalls. They have also introduced interesting food options such as prawn paste chicken rice and halal tucha and new dining concepts. This ensures a good variety of food options, which is not always a given in existing hawker centres. Even in popular hawker centres like Teka, we can find rows of stalls selling, offering similar food because NEA is required to award one vacant stall at a time based on tendered rentals to the highest bidder. NEA does not have a mechanism to curate an attractive collection of food options at each hawker centre like in the case of the SEHC model. Such an allocation system run by NEA would be complex to execute and be subject to potential audit issues. The SEHCs are establishing themselves within their communities and serving the residents well. CUN Hawker Centre recently passed its three-year mark. The hawkers are doing well and 97% of them chose to renew their contracts in July this year. At Bukit Panjang Hawker Centre, the renewal rate is similarly high at 96%. SESCs at Kampung Emirati and OTH are also doing well, with hardly any vacant stalls and a long waiting list of hawker, potential hawkers. This is similar to any managed hawker stalls, where only 3% of cooked food stalls are vacant. SESC operators have also kept their centres open during breakfast, lunch and dinner. A major request made by the public. In contrast, some existing hawker centres focus on only one or two main meals a day. And some hawkers only work three to four days a week. To ensure vibrancy, SEHC operators have also introduced creative initiatives to increase footfall, such as complementary parking, lucky draw programmes and shuttle bus services for office workers. 
The SASCs are leading a new model of clean and productive hawker centres, applying the best practices they have learned in the private sector to overcome the constraints of labour shortage. All the SASCs come with productive in, uh, productivity initiatives such as automated tray return systems and centralised dish washing. Providing trained and properly supervised cleaners and a more hygienic environment have increased table turnover rates, benefiting both patrons and hawkers. The average tray return rates at SEHCs are much higher than those at our existing hawker centres because of the operator's efforts at implementing the automatic tray return system. It makes the job of our cleaners easier and alleviates manpower shortages that our hawkers face in looking for workers to wash dishes. During my walkabout at Shunfu Mud Food Centre, I had noticed an economy bihun and nasi lemak stall, which had a faded sign advertising to hire a stall assistant. The hawker shared that her children were not interested in helping out at the stall, and she had been unable to hire an assistant despite advertising for a long time. SCSCs have also managed to attract new entrants to sustain the hawker trade. The median age of hawkers at the seven SCSCs is 43 years old, significantly lower than the median 60 age at our existing centres. This is an encouraging sign and can be attributed to various initiatives introduced by SCSC operators. For example, Timber's incubator program and OTMH train and place entrepreneurship <coughs> scheme nurture new hawkers. Collectively, the five SESC operators have trained a total of 38 aspiring hawkers since they started operations. These efforts complement NEA's ongoing incubation stall program, ISP, which has supported 12 aspiring hawkers to date. Eight of them are still on the program, while the rest had decided that they were either not suitable for the hawker trade or withdrew due to personal reasons. In addition, the operators have introduced productivity measures such as centralised dishwashing, which allow hawkers to focus on their cooking and reduce the amount of menial tasks they need to do. Taken together, these initiatives reduce the physical burden of being a hawker and can go a long way to help sustain our hawker trade. Nonetheless, the SCSCs will take time to establish themselves. Suyen Hawker Centre, the first SGSCs, only started operating three years ago, with the latest at Pasiris opening in January. Hawkers at these new centres need time to build up a clientele. Hawkers at these new centres need overall, the, over, the average monthly store vacancy at SGSCs at about 10% is not exceptionally high, and it's not a bad result considering that most stalls are new. Many of the hawkers are also new to the trade and need time to experiment with their recipes and decide if this is the career for them. The centres also need time to build up footfall. The market mechanism is working and government should not intervene unnecessarily in mandating low or no rental, which could otherwise affect fair competition. Hawkers are entrepreneurs after all. We want to reward successful hawkers to sustain the trade and preserve our beloved hawker heritage. It's natural to have some level of churn as better hawkers replace those who are less suited for the trade. Market forces will lead to a fair distribution of hawker stalls which ultimately benefit residents. It's inappropriate for government to subsidize a hawker on the basis that business is poor. This would be unfair to a better performing hawker who thrives on healthy competition. It would be unfair to other private sector food shop operators located in close vicinity to the centres. The model must therefore ensure that rentals and costs are transparent and fair to hawkers, but cannot subsidise hawkers to the extent that it distorts the working of the market. In summary, Despite implementation challenges, the SEHC model is generally sound. 
food prices are kept affordable with a good variety of high quality options. And the majority of hawkers are doing well at the SCHCs. We should not undo these achievements. As with any trials and experiments, we cannot always get it right the first time. We have heard the feedback and we will adjust the model to better serve Singaporeans. To continue the SEHC model and improve it so as to serve patrons well and look after the well-being of our hawkers. I ask members to give the model time to adapt, adjust and optimise the outcomes we seek to, to achieve. First, availability of affordable food options that does not deny respectable earnings for our hawkers and at the same time moderates the free market F&B alternatives. Second, a decent living for our local hawkers that is sustainable even while providing affordable options. And third, to preserve our hawker centres where we are proud of our unique, vibrant social spaces as community dining rooms where everyone goes to, where affordable food is also good food. 